Well, Tyler, thank you again for joining me tonight and for helping me just bring these conversations to dancers because there's no doubt that conversations around food and body fall no pun intended to the waistline when it comes to dance training we're slowly making shifts in the industry in regards to promoting better habits among food but that being said we have such a ways to go and i think a lot of dance teachers and maybe dancers don't really approach the conversation just because maybe they don't know how to approach the conversation so i'm so grateful to have you on here tonight Oh, I mean, I'm interested to kind of, you know, learn a little something too. Um, but yeah, I'm happy to share, you know, how I've kind of gotten through because I do believe that like nutrition is so much a part of like the wellness and well being as a dancer. It's like goes right hand in hand. So I also think it's a really important conversation to have. Absolutely. So Tyler, we, most of us probably know who you are, but why don't you give us a nice little journey of where you, you've come from being a pre-professional dancer to now your professional days, really just walk us through your journey. Um, well, I grew up in Bakersfield, California. That's where I'm from. It's where my mother still has a dance studio. Um, <laughs> And I first came to New York actually when I was 11 to do the Music Man on Broadway. And that's what brought me to the city. Um, I got the part and my mom said, are you crazy? You're not moving to New York. <laughs> and I don't know what got into me, but she said that I said, mom, what if I never get an opportunity like this ever again and I didn't do it? And she's like, how do you say no to that? So. My grandmother moved with me for a year because my parents had to, you know, work so that I could afford to live here. Sure. And um, yeah, so I always thought I would do the Broadway route because I grew up doing all kinds of dance and ballet was actually the one I, I found kind of the most, not, it was boring, but it was also just because it was so difficult and it took sure. so much concentration that I think you know, who wouldn't say that it's easier to dance to like a pop song, you know, it's like just more fun. Mm -hmm. um, but while I was here, I went to School of American Ballet. And, and during the days I would train there and then go do the show at night. And that was where I really fell in love with ballet. There was something about the teachers and the repertoire that I learned that I just absolutely loved. And you know, fast forward, I went home when the show closed, I kept doing things in California. And finally, after three summer courses at SAP, they said, we really want you to like stay for the year. And so I did. And at the end of that first year, um, I got my apprenticeship at 15. Wow. So it all happened like very quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, I say I'm really fortunate. I think, you know, sometimes people have a hard time finding what they want to do, you know, sometimes they can go into college or something and not know. And for me, it kind of picked me really early on. So I'm fortunate in that sense. I was like, okay, I guess this is what I'm doing. And I love it so much. Yeah, it's so fortunate to be able to pursue your passion, especially to have that passion be sparked so early, which really is happens for a lot of dancers. Um, I'd love to hear about the role that food played in your life as a younger dancer? Yeah, um, you know, I think a lot of it too comes with, you know, when you're younger, how you're brought up. And my parents were always, you know, kind of the rule to thumb for us was eat whatever you like in moderation. You know, like <laughs> it's not like I was going crazy and just like eating a million desserts or things like that. But every kind of food group or anything I wanted, that was given to us when we were younger. So I, I think that that really helped me because when I moved to New York at such a young age, you know, that was all I knew. And that was what I thought I needed. You know, my mom was constantly saying, you know, you need to drink fluids and constantly keep it snacking throughout the day to make sure while you're dancing and when you're younger you know you're just burning things off like like crazy so that was always kind of the mentality that I grew up with and I think that I'm so grateful that you know I had parents that that's what they were you know suggesting for all of us me and my sister 
Yeah, it's so true. I mean, how we grow up and the role that parents play and even dance teachers, I think this is just a perfect example of how important it is to have that non-restrictive mindset from the get-go. And that really does come from our elders and, and the, you know, quote unquote, higher ups in the dance world. That's why it's so important, again, to just have these conversations. And it sounds like with you, you it sounds like had a probably a more intuitive approach to how you were fueling your body. It sounds like you were able to eat what you wanted, what you craved. Um, and because of that, you were able to also probably find natural balance. I think some people uh, have this misconception that it's like, if I allow myself to eat all foods, I'm only going to want to eat those, you know, uh, maybe less nourishing foods, like all the desserts, for example. But, but what actually happens is when we do have a peaceful relationship with food, when food is not restricted in that way, then we actually find that we desire all foods, whether that be like a fresh salad or an ice cream sundae for, um, among the entire spectrum. I love both of those so much. <laughs> like I, I could say, oh, Sometimes I could live off salad when it's such a good salad and, and I love salad dressings of the dressing is really good. Yes. But then at the same time, sometimes all I need is a chocolate sundae. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And your thing is pasta. I heard. My thing is definitely pasta. It's like, it's kind of a little superstition of mine. I think now um, where I, I feel my best. I don't know the night before I have a really hard show if I have pasta and I actually don't know if that is something that, you know, nutrition wise is something that would make sense. Yeah. But for me, I really feel my best when I have, you know, pasta with a little protein the night before. Well, I'm going to actually break this down a little bit because I, I love that you're saying this. And there is a very good nutritionally reason for this. And that's because pasta as a straight up carbohydrate is helping to top off your glycogen stores. Glycogen is essentially the storage form of carbs on our body. And contrary to what some people might think, carbs are a dancer's essentially best friend when it comes to intense movement. And for any dancer watching who's familiar with Tyler's videos, you're doing pretty intense movement <laughs> all the time. <laughs> so it makes sense that you're gonna feel ideal when you're topping off your glycogen stores from the night before and of course incorporating that protein just to help with muscle rebuilding and um, muscle recovery so it sounds like you're just getting in all of this balance and I love that it's become somewhat of a superstition because it's, it's a good superstition to have it means that you are just constantly re re um, repleting your glycogen repleting your energy stores and just setting you up for the next day yeah, well, it's good to know that it's also like good for me. It feels like I feel the best when I do that. Um, you know, and even the day of a show, I'm also a little bit like, um, I like to eat the same kind of thing at the same <laughs> time, because I, I don't love dancing super full. Mm -hmm. um, like I kind of almost like to feel a little bit like I definitely eat dinner afterwards, which I know eating late isn't always the best, but with a schedule like mine, it's just not really possible for me to have like a full meal before I'm going to be in a tutu. Yep. So I always have lunch at around like three o'clock and you could tell me if this is good or not, but I always have lunch at like three and then I'll have like, you know, maybe a granola bar, a cliff bar or something or a yogurt, a Greek yogurt or something, you know, before the show, if I get hungry because mm -hmm. for me, if I'm feeling really full and like I ate a full meal, like I just can't, I don't feel like I can dance my best. Yeah. And again, just to break this down for the dancers watching, Tyler is essentially uh, debunking two major myths for dancers. One is intermittent fasting, that it is just very impractical for dancers because Tyler, you experience having these later shows where you have to have a recovery meal as in your dinner late at night. It's somewhat of a myth to think that like, oh, I sh eating late is is maybe not ideal for a dancer. It's actually for you probably ideal because it's your recovery meal. And this is a perfect example of why a, a, reg a regimen like intermittent fasting is just never going to be practical for a dancer, especially a dancer at your level. And then the other myth that you are debunking for debunking for us is the keto diet. Because like you said before, you know, incorporating these 
uh, carb rich foods like pasta and your granola bars before a performance, again, comes back to you supporting your energy needs as a dancer. So you're without even realizing it debunking two major myths for dancers. So I love that. That's good to learn because <laughs> I'm, I'm really interested in all of this. So I was really excited to, to talk with you um, and to learn something for myself. I mean, I can share what I ha what has worked for me, but it's nice to know that it's also been good for me and healthy. <laughs> Absolutely. And another thing, it sounds like you are just doing such a great job with replenishing and refueling your body consistently throughout the day, even though you may not love to dance on a full stomach, which by the way, makes so much sense. I think that would just be super uncomfortable for any of us to dance on a full stomach. Having those smaller, more consistent meals throughout the day, keep you fueled without keeping you feeling uncomfortably full uh, is super helpful to your performance. One thing that I will ask too, that like our yeah. physical therapists always suggest is like right after like a high energy workout, like Sometimes after she'll say, you know, like chocolate milk or, um, you know, this protein shake that she suggests, which is like reset 360. And I always feel like sometimes when I need something, but like I said, I, I feel like I'm really hungry maybe, but I don't feel like I can have a full meal. That's something that really feels like it, it fills me and also gives me energy. 100%. Chocolate milk is like, as a sports dietitian, that's one of our secret little weapons for athletes and then for myself, for dancers, um, because it does have that perfect balance of protein from milk and then carbohydrates from the sugar coming from chocolate. So it's like this perfect little balance of what we're always thinking about when it comes to refueling and recovery, which is that protein carbohydrate mix. And same goes for the shake that your therapist is encouraging as well. Like having that uh, taking advantage of that post-performance opportunity for recovery is so important. And chocolate <laughs> milk is so good. So that's also a fun thing. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Now, Tyler, a lot of dancers do struggle with uh, body image, whether it's negative body image, whether it's maybe just unhelpful body image thoughts, you know, because we are standing in front of mirrors all day and it can be super easy for young dancers, especially we see this a lot during summer intensives when dancers are just in new environments, um, really developing some unhelpful thoughts around body image. What has been your experience in this realm? And do you have any tips and advice that you can share? Yeah, I mean, I think that it's really easy to fall into that trap as like a dancer. We, like you said, we're constantly in front of the mirror, constantly trying to always make ourselves better as like a dancer, or the way we look or all. It's just such a like visual aesthetic. So yeah, I think it's so hard sometimes to also start comparing yourselves to the other dancers. And like for me, you know, sometimes, of course, I will look at somebody and think, oh, I wish I was a little bit taller or had longer legs. And, you know, we get, we're given the gifts that we have. And I think that it's for a reason. And so sometimes I say, you know, yeah, I wish maybe my arabesque could go higher or this or that. But maybe then if I had that sort of flexibility, I wouldn't be able to move as quickly and do the things that I can do. And maybe that dancer, then, you know, she has other gifts. And I think that that's sometimes where you need a reminder. And sometimes I think that we all kind of lose sight for a second. Um, and I really always feel that, like, you know, dancers need muscles. We need to be able to stay healthy. And for me, um, I just think like what you're talking about, finding that perfect balance is, is really important because everybody's body is different. And so you, what one person does might, might not work for another. You know, you really have to figure out what works for your own body. And for me, that's always what has worked, like things in moderation and then also trying to just always focus on being like my best self instead of like, oh, I need to look like that person or, oh, I can't do that, what she can do. So, you know, but we all need reminders. <laughs> Absolutely. I, I say this all the time, but body image, whether 
number one, the idea of positive body image, I don't really even like to use that word because I think having a positive body image could sometimes feel very untouchable for dancers who, like you said, are so vulnerable to having these thoughts pop in at any time. So it really, even just to get to a neutral body image where we're use, utilizing what you're doing right now, which is body appreciation as a tool to just feel neutral within our bodies. You know, it's like, whether you look different than another dancer doesn't matter. At the end of the day, utilizing the mirrors as a way to enhance yourself as an artist should be the goal rather than utilizing the mirror to compare like, oh, well, her body looks like X, Y, Z. How can I make my body looks like X, Y, Z? Because the bottom line is, even in the research, we know that manipulating our body shape or size, whether that means by restrictive dieting or even over-exercising, never lasts long-term and usually puts us in risk for injury. Yeah, I, I, I see it all the time too. You know, like you can almost see it about to happen when you see somebody's body type that um, you can tell is one way and that it, it's not looking that way. So mm -hmm. I, I definitely feel like, and I've, and I've had injuries. That's been mm -hmm. a, something I've had to overcome in my career. But for the amount of work that I've done and the amount of ballets that I've done at dance, I really am really grateful to my body that I've only had two serious injuries, you know? I, and I think that that is due to the way I kind of maintain my body and you know, the nutrition I put in, so. Absolutely, and dancers, for everyone watching, it also goes back to Tyler having a strong intuition in regards to what her body needs, and just Tyler, from speaking to you, you are honoring the need for balance among your food choices, carbohydrates, protein, fats, you're not following any crazy restrictive type of diets, which is super important for dancers to realize, and that's in what it sounds like from my perspective looking in, that that has just been such a key player in your ability to sustain a, uh, maybe not necessarily like completely injury-free career, but a long-lasting career where you've been able to overcome your injuries. Yeah, and my physical therapist is always saying that like, you know, the body wants to heal itself and it wants to recover. And she's always saying that mine really responds well to that and yeah. so maybe that is in fact to the way I've kind of you know I don't know tried to maintain it <laughs> you giving the tools it needs to do it yeah that was what I was looking for but you said it better <laughs> I, th th I feel like I don't mean to toot my own horn, but like, I feel like this happens a lot on these chats. <laughs> That's why you do what you do. And I do what I do. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. So Tyler, a lot of dancers, especially on the younger end, like the pre-professional dancers tend to hyper-focus. I know I made this mistake when I was dancing full time and the only place it, le it landed me was in burnout. Hyper-focus on our art, especially we see this with ballet. Um, how are you able to integrate balance into your life as a dancer so that you are not hyper-focused. Um, I also like say that that's thanks to like my parents and the way I was brought up. I mean, they always made sure that I also did all kinds of dance. So I think it was just kind of in my mentality of kind of balance and kind of spreading myself out that way. Um, and, you know, they always made sure that there was balance with like, yes, you know, I, I did crazy things like my grandmother would leave me like three hours. She would drive me three hours there and three hours back um, just to basically get dance. But at the same time, my mom was making sure that I was always like at a normal school so that I could socialize with children so that I could, you know, be at the school dances. And so for me, I've always known that like there should be like a healthy lifestyle um, that also then therefore helps the like dance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. It just sounds like from again, day one, you've had integrated in your life to have a, a balanced approach where your life experiences are spanning across all different realms. It's not just solely in the dance studio. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So Tyler, Talk to us about COVID. COVID has presented a ton of challenges for dancers, even dancers that are now getting back to the studio. I'd love to hear 
any specific challenges that it may be brought on for you, but also maybe some opportunities. What opportunities would you say have been born from this pandemic for you? Well, the pandemic for me has really brought me closer to a lot of basically like my audience in a way. I feel uh, like it's allowed me to sort of share more of myself instead of me as a ballerina. And I've had the time to do that. And I really enjoy getting connect to connect with people through that way and getting to let them in and see that, yeah, like sometimes I think that ballerinas get put on this sort of pedestal. And it's like what you were saying, like there's this untouchable thing. And in reality, for me at least, I can only speak for myself, but I'm a super down to earth like girl. And I've really enjoyed getting to let people know that like, look, I struggle with the same things that you guys do. And during the pandemic, we were all struggling way, way together. And so for me, I think that's been the biggest gift. And I think that through Turn It Out With Tyler classes, um, yeah, I just, I've really, really enjoyed getting to connect with so many people around the world. Yeah, I definitely can relate to that. So Tyler, just like a little fun question. Do you have any morning rituals? Because you spoke to us about pre-performance. That's usually like a bar of some sort or a snack. And then post-performance, you're usually getting getting in your recovery meal. What about in the morning? Any Any rituals, especially on like a performance day? Yeah, you can tell me if these are good too. <laughs> Normally when I wake up, um, if I have time, you know, I'll make eggs for myself. Yogurt, I put some granola with blueberries um, on it. Um, and that's typically, and I like orange juice. I've never drank coffee, but that's because people in my family, when I was raised, none of them drank coffee. So I was always just an orange juice kind of gal. Um, but that's typically what my, my breakfast is. And I think it's, um, and then for lunch, actually, and this I wonder also, um, my go-to is either like a turkey sandwich or a peanut butter and jelly. Mm -hmm. um, and that's kind of what I stick to on the days of my shows. Yeah, well, all of it gets an A plus by me, even though you don't need me to give you an A plus. <laughs> I know I'm a dietitian, but at the end of the day, we are all experts of our own bodies. A lot of what I teach Tyler is just this anti-diet approach where most often we have to put this goal of weight loss. So if a dancer comes to me with a goal of weight loss, I'm like, listen, my work is not a weight loss program. I, it's, I'm, I rather you, it's more important for me for you to build a balanced and um, positive relationship with food than it is for you to attain an unattainable body weight for yourself, right? So I'm usually encouraging that dancers put this goal of weight loss on the back burner. It's like, if it happens, it happens. It might happen, but your body's gonna respond in the way that it needs to as when we rebuild and support a friendly, positive, and balanced relationship with food. You know what's best for your body. It's like, I'm not living in your body. You're the one that's been living in your body for all of these years. So together we can chat about what, tools will help you best to like optimize your energy levels. But at the end of the day, you're the one that's going to have to really assess what works for you. And that sounds like exactly what you've discovered over these years in your dance career is just what has worked for you. Balanced meals and snacks throughout your day that may be more substantial recovery meal after performance, chocolate milk, and thus forth. And of course, not restricting. Yes. Yeah, it's so true. And I find that you know, that finding that balance, especially mentally, mm. it, it makes it, it makes it work. So you're not constantly like you're saying, think of restriction, restriction, and then you kind of want that thing. You know what I mean? If you're, I feel like taking it away from yourself. Yes. Um, and that's why I think I'm never really craving one thing in particular, because I'm kind of able to get a real well-rounded sort of nutrition, if that makes sense. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. You know, at the end of the day, something I always say is that as humans, we're curious beings. We've all heard of the phrase, the grass is always greener on the other side. And how that relates to this is like, if we are restricting any one type of food or food group, we're always going to be wondering and thinking. And essentially what's going to happen is we're going to start obsessing over whatever food or food group we're not allowing ourselves to have. You know, we're just, it's human nature to be to be curious, whether that's a conscious curious or even a subconscious curious. And I think 
what you're saying is that those cravings that are building, that's a product of deprivation, whether it's like a psychological deprivation or an actual physical deprivation, like not eating enough calories throughout the day and so forth. So it makes a lot of sense. Well, good. <laughs> And Tyler, my last question that I ask all the dancers on here is how would you define what it means to be the healthy dancer? Ooh. I think the first word that came to mind was like balance. And I think it's like balance in, in everything, you know, in normal life, in a career, um, you know, needing to take that rest every once in a while taking that day off or whatever it is that you need. Like, I think that that's really important. And it's something honestly that I learned a lot when I was recovering through my injury. And it's, you know, sometimes we just need that time, like mentally, physically, everything to recover. Mm -hmm. And that way we can be like our best self the next day. Um, but for me, I really do take very good care of my body meaning you know at night i have a whole thing where i'm you know i take my epsom salt baths i <laughs> elevate i make you know so i think it just all of that plays into account and i just think that the mental and physical like wellness are so together there you know you can't have one without the other and i think that that would be i think the thing that i would say is just like finding the balance is it's tricky but I yeah. think if you can work on that, that's probably the, the best way to have the healthiest career. Yeah, and I think it's so tricky because as dancers, the idea of supporting our mental and emotional well-being are actually more against the grain than it is to support our physical well-being. I mean, just from a young age, we, it's ingrained into us to constantly work on our technique and cross-train and practice and, you know, we're taught like practice makes perfect it's not as i think i mentioned this in the beginning of our chat it's not we don't hear it as much in regards to supporting our mental and emotional well-being and so much of that also plays into your, our habits making sure our habits are sustainable that's what's key that you are doing exactly that and you are truly promoting such wonderful habits for dancers so i thank you oh thanks it was really fun talking with you <laughs>